Well, what is up, everybody? It is an honor and a privilege to be speaking with you today. Hey, Pastor Daniel will be back next week. Everybody excited for your pastor to be back? How many of you love your pastor? Come on, let them know you love them. We love Pastor Daniel. I love Pastor Daniel. So excited for him to be back next week and continuing on in this series that we're starting today, kicking off a brand new series called For the Love. And so I love this series because over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about what it means to love others well. And not only what it means to love others well, but what it means to us as we begin to love others well, what we find out is not only does it benefit others, but it also benefits us as well, that that we are a recipient um, on the other side of learning to love others well, that it also affects us in a very positive way. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about that. And so we're going to be talking about what it means to just love well. And so it's going to be a great, great series. Um, and today, there's no better way we can kick off this series than, than with Food Bank Sunday. And so for many of you guys, maybe you've been around before, maybe this is your first Sunday at Life Point. You're like, what is Food Bank Sunday? Well, here in a minute, you're going to have the opportunity and we're going to end service today. So this is good news for you since it's like the backup guy that you came to hear today, right? The good news is we're going to end a little early, and so uh, we've, got, we've got just a few minutes that I want to share a quick thought with you, and then we're going to let you guys go, and we're going to let you guys go to go meet a huge need in our community, and uh, so I'm really excited about that, and so I'll be telling you more about Food Bank Sunday and how you can play a part as we continue on in this service, uh, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to play a part of helping the, the, the not only the hurting and the, and the hopeless in our area, but also those that are hungry, that there are uh, thousands of people in our region that are labeled food insecure that do not know where their next meal is coming from. And so each and every year as a church, we want to rise and shine and we want to let our light shine before our city to just show the love of God in a big way. And so that's what Food Bank Sunday is all about. And let me tell you this, the food bank really depends on LifePoint continuing to support the way that we support. Every year, we just kind of blow their minds through your guys' donation. And so we just believe that today is going to be no different and we're going to be able to meet the need uh, uh, that's in our community and in our region across all of our locations in a very big way. And the cool thing is, no matter who you are today, you can all play a part. That you don't have to have any special skill. It doesn't matter what you do or don't do. Uh, you can all be a part of this. And so that's good. And together, 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 we can make a huge difference. How many of you know this, that, that oftentimes when you look at a need, like, you know, helping those that are hungry in our community, oftentimes you can look at that and you can think that's a pretty daunting task. But I want you to know this. What you're a part of is much bigger than just the part you play. The part you play, while it will be significant today, what will make it significant is when you come alongside of other people doing it. I mean, unless you're Warren Buffett in here and you can go, you know, buy out Walmart and not think twice about it, you probably can't make by yourself a dent in poverty and those that are hungry in our community. But together, yeah. together, if all of us do our part today, what we're a part of is so much bigger than just the part we play that together... We can make a huge dent, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do something together, and it's going to be incredibly exciting. And so there's no better way we can kick off a series about loving others than to actually practically go love others. And so this is kind of the pregame. This is the kickoff to paint the town red. And then next weekend, I hope you signed up for a project. There are hundreds of projects across all of our locations that I hope you're going to go swing a hammer or paint a fence or do something to serve a need in our community. And I promise you it'll bless our community in a huge way. I know our local partners are looking forward to you signing up for a project. And so if you haven't already signed up for a project, let me just reiterate what Ethan said a while ago. Please get your phone out, download the app, the Serve app, and sign up for a project. Give 30 minutes. Give an hour of your time this coming weekend. Uh, there's a project for you. I promise you that will meet your time, that will meet, you know, kind of maybe even where you live. There's projects spaced out all throughout the community. And I promise you, as you refresh others, you'll be refreshed as well. And uh, so that's just a principle in scripture. And so I hope you're planning on serving paint the town red. Um, because here's the thing, don't all of us just want to make a difference? Don't all of us, there's something intrinsic inside of us all that we want to matter. We want to make a difference. And can I just say this? God has called us to make a difference. 
See, he's created each of you on purpose for a purpose, and that purpose was to make a difference. And there is no better way to make a difference than really understanding what it means to love well, that as we love other people well, we begin to make the greatest dis, uh, difference. Here's the thing. The greatest commandment is this, and, and Jesus said this throughout the Gospels, to love him, but then also to love others. And so as you begin to love others well, you live a life of love. And as you live a life of love, guess what? You will make a difference. And so for those of you that are, that are wanting to make a difference, and I know for most of us, there's something inside of all of us, whether we thought about it today or not, whether we woke up with it, you know, on our mind, all of us want to play a part in something that matters, that makes a difference. And love is really the answer to that. And so if love is the answer to that, how do we love well? If God says, you know, hey, love, you know, love the Lord your God, this is like the biggest thing you could do to not only love God, but also love others. How do we do that? So I think there's a bunch of different things that we could teach on today, but here's one of the things that I'm learning. I want to just take a quick poll real quick. How many of you guys are parents in the room? All the parents, can I get a show of hands? Awesome. The majority of you guys in the room are parents. How many of you guys are raising toddlers at the moment? Toddlers. Praying for our dive workers right now. Because there's a lot of toddler hands going up. Here's what I'm learning about being the dad of a toddler. Uh, toddlers like to imitate you. This can be scary. It can be very good, but it can also be bad. I was talking to somebody the other day. I was talking about things that their toddlers do to imitate them. And they said, oh, when my kid was three years old, you'll never guess what happened. I dropped something one day, and I said this kind of certain letter word that I shouldn't have said. And then all of a sudden, it came out, and the toddler heard it. And now I had to deal with all day long them running around the house saying that word that they shouldn't say and me trying to figure out as a parent, how am I going to get them to not say that? You know what I mean? We've all made mistakes like that probably. And you thought, man, I wish my kid wouldn't have heard me do that or, you know, heard me say that or seen me do that. Kids are watching. And so I'm learning my little boy is always watching. I cross my feet a certain way and then he starts crossing his feet a certain way. And this can be really, really scary, but it can also be really good because that's how we grow. In fact, imitation is key to us actually, you know, the whole the idea of us watching and, and hearing and, and, and then doing. It's key to us actually beginning to grow as, as individuals. It's key for my little boy to watch me and then do. It's how he learns. And so I think for so many of us as, as Christians, it's also key for us as well to, to watch to watch and then learn and then do. And this isn't only us that, and this isn't really only me that thinks that this is a great idea, but this is even how Jesus would say he learned. And this is how Jesus would say that he learned to love well. He said this, and I want you to see this scripture in John chapter five. He says this. He said, Jesus gave them the answer. Verily I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself, but he can only do what he sees the father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. And so Jesus would say, the way that I've learned to do things, the way that I've learned to love well, the way that I've learned to do what I do and, and act the way I act is because I can only do what I see the father doing. And so as I see the father do that, then I'm able to do that as well. And so I would think the same is true of us, that as we watch, we can learn, and then we can act, and then we can do. And so I was thinking about this message, and I was thinking about who is the greatest example of love that we could follow to then watch and learn and then do. And I believe the greatest example we could follow is that of our Heavenly Father. Not our earthly Father, but our Heavenly Father. And here's why I believe that, because Scripture says this. Scripture says in 1 John 4, 8, that God is love. And so if we're going to love well, and we're going to know what it means to love, well, doesn't it make sense that we look at the person who is love? God is love. And so if God is love, then we can look at how he loved, and in doing so, then we can imitate that love, and we can learn, and we can grow, and we can make a difference ourselves. And so I want to show you today one of the greatest acts of love ever recorded by our Heavenly Father. One of the greatest acts of love where he demonstrated his love in a crazy way. And it's found in a very popular passage of scripture that all of us know. That all of us have probably read. In fact, all of us could probably quote this. And at some you know, point of time, whether you're Christian or not Christian, you've probably seen this or heard this. And it's this. It's John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world. God so loved us. 
See, even if you're in here today and you've never felt love, can I just say God so loves you? God so loved us that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish or shall not perish but have eternal life. I mean, this scripture blows my mind when you think about the act of love it is because I have a son and I couldn't imagine so loving anything or anyone to the point that I would give up something like my son that matters so much to me. But God so loved us as he stood there between, you know, the decision of, uh, of, of the sin that would separate us from him and our relationship with him and the decision to give up his son in that Mount Everest moment. He would so love us so much. And this is the gospel, by the way, that he would give up. He would send his one and only son. The son would die on a cross. This is the gospel. This is what we talk about. This is what we, we, really, we really live for every Sunday when it comes to helping you know God is, is understanding this truth that God loves you so much that he sent, he gave us Jesus. And through Jesus, we can have eternal life. That's why this church exists, so that people will know the love of God and then find life in Jesus and in doing so become fully alive. And so there's no greater act of love than this. And so I want to show you three things just real quickly, like over the next 10 minutes, three things that I believe we can learn out of this scripture that really we can imitate um, how the Father loves well. And in doing these things, we too can love others well. And then we can go make a huge difference in our community today, all right? So if you're taking notes, I want you to write these three things down. The first one is this when it comes to loving is love sees. Love sees. Scripture says this in Romans 3, 23. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. And so love sees. You have to see in this picture, here is our Father in heaven, and he realizes as he looks down on humanity that all have sinned and that sin has separated us from him. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of those sin were death. And so he had to, he had to send Jesus to pay the price for us. And so, so God was in heaven, and he looked down on humanity, and he looked down in the separation, and, and, he, and he saw us. He saw our need. He saw our need for a Savior. He saw our need for redemption. He saw us you know, hurting. He saw us helpless. He saw us spiritually hungry. And so if we're going to learn to love well, we too have to begin to see. We too have to see those around us that are hurting. See those around us that are hopeless. See those around us that are spiritually hungry and those around us that are, that are actually physically hungry as well. And that's what today is about. Today is about us seeing that. And so it's really cool because today it's not just this kind of this theoretical idea that we get to talk to you today about love sees. Now go out and try to see it, but we're actually going to show you the need. I want to actually help you see today the way love would see. I want you to see the needs in our community. I want you to see this, and here it is, that there's 34,000 people. There's 34,000 people in our region that are labeled food insecure. Here's what that means. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. And they're not eating not because they want to lose weight. They're not eating because they can't. And so there are people all around us every day that they don't know where the next meal or the next two is coming from. And today we just want you to see that because love sees. And let me show you something that's even going to, you know, boggle your mind a little bit more. And I saw hundreds of hands go up a minute ago for all the parents in the room. But let me show you this. Out of the 34,000, one third of them are children. That means there's over 10,000 people in our region. In our region. Kids that don't know where their next meal is coming from. And so this isn't to guilt you today or, you know, to make you feel bad about what you have. This is just to show you what's going on in our community. This is just to inform you of the need because love sees. And so God looked down and he saw a need. And not only did he see the need, but then he said, I, I, I'm not just going to see. I'm not just going to stand up here and say, well, that sucks to be them, right? No, I'm going to do something about it. And so he sent his son, Jesus. And so the second thing love is, is love does. Love not only sees, but love does. 
Love actually responds. There's action. And Jesus said, I see the need, and so guess what? I'm going to act on it. And so the measure of his love was action. And it's also the measure of our love as well. And so he gave us Jesus. He sent his son to die on a cross knowing that he would be beaten, knowing that he would be scorned, knowing that he would be nailed to a cross. And he said, in spite of all of that, knowing that about him, I am so moved by compassion and I see the need is so big that I have to do this. And so he didn't just see, but he acted. And for many of us, it's not enough to just see a need and know about it. But we have to see a need and then do something about it. See, God calls all of us not just to see, but also respond, to be hearers and doers of the word. He said, I don't want you to just hear what's coming in today, but I want you to actually hear it and then go do it. And so I believe that's what God is calling us to do today, to be a hearer of this, that there is a need in our community, but then to actually go do something about it. And here's the thing, and this is a really hard scripture, but 1 John 3, 17, it says this. It says that if you see a brother or sister in need, and you have the means to do something about it, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing, it says, what happens to the love of God? I want to just ask this question today. And I want this to kind of sink in a little bit. If we see a need, the 34,000 people in our region, and we do nothing about it, what happens to the love of God? What happens to it? It says it disappears. And then this was pretty convicting when I read it. It says, and you made it disappear. So when I see a need, but I do nothing about it, I can make the love of God disappear? Yeah. Because people are looking to see our good deeds and to see how we love. And in doing so, they... They see Jesus. We are the vehicles in which other people get to encounter the love of God. And so today, it's really not just about an opportunity. It's really a responsibility. Today, we don't have an opportunity to do good and to love well. We have a responsibility to love well. Can I just say this? We have a responsibility today to let our light shine. We have a responsibility as a church to say we will not let the love of God disappear in our community. We will not let the love of God disappear in our region. Not on our watch. Not when, when God, you put this church here. See, if the church would do, and I know Pastor Daniel has said this many times, if the church would do what the church is supposed to do, there'd be no need for government assistance and all of these things that... And so I wonder if there's anyone in here today that would just say, not on my watch. Not on our watch today as a church. We will not let the love of God disappear in our city. But we'll go swing a hammer. We'll buy some food. We'll paint a fence. We'll do what it takes because we will not let the love of God disappear. Come on, I hope this is sinking in. We will not let the love of God disappear. I'm declaring today that Life Point Church will not let the love of God disappear in our city, in our communities, in our region. We will not let the love of God disappear in Fredericksburg. We will not let it disappear in Stafford. We will not let it disappear in Spotsy, in Culpeper, in Richmond. We will not. But we will see a need, and then we'll do something about it. We'll meet the need, because we will not let it disappear. And so that's the responsibility we have today. But can I just say this, that the Bible is full of examples that as you give, it shall be given back to you. Today, when you go out and you shop and you buy food, God's going to bless you as well. God's going to do something in you as well. The last thing that I see about love is not only love sees and love does, but also love receives. 
Love receives today. See, God would, would give up his only son. He would send Jesus, but he would also receive us as sons and daughters. He would receive many sons and daughters through the sacrifice of his son. See, there's always, it's kind of counterintuitive in the kingdom of God that, that the first shall be last and it's more blessed to give than to receive and all of these things. And, and he just says that when you give, it will be given back to you. And so today you have to know that as you act and as you do, God, God will bless. It says this, it says that whoever is kind to the poor, whoever is kind to the 34,000 people in our region that are without the poor lends to the Lord. And he will, this is a promise, you can take it to the bank, you can cast the check, it will not bounce, he will reward you for what you have done. And so today, we get to be an answer to someone else's prayer, but in doing so, who knows, God might begin to answer your prayer, you might be rewarded through what you do, and through how you act, and through how you respond, because God will reward you for the action you take today. And so it's good news to know that as we pour out today, we're also going to be poured back to, that's how love works, that as you love others, you begin to receive the benefits of that as well. And so that's why God designed it that way. That's why he would say it's the most important thing you can do. It's not just about them, but it's about you as well. But as you love others, it affects you. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you an opportunity to love others today. I want to show you something. They're going to bring a table out real quick. But I want to show you a starting place today that I hope that all of us can, can start at today. And it's this. There's maybe a table of food coming out somewhere. <laughs> Here it comes. Give it up for our stage team. Thank you, guys. Today, each of us, I want to challenge us, each of us, to, to start at the place of 30 pounds. This is 30 pounds. And today, 30 pounds of food, if each one of us participate, all of us, in all of our locations, it would equate to over 128,000 pounds of food. And that poundage would make sure that every person who is food insecure in our area would at least have a meal. Like, we can make a dent today. We can provide a meal today as a church for every single person in our region. That's huge. And so for many of you guys, maybe you look at this and you think there's no way I can do that. That as you're asking other people or you're asking me to be a blessing, I need somebody to be a blessing to me. And I would just say, would you give what you have? You know, there was, a, there was a little widow in the Bible. She just gave what she had. It's just a penny. And God has a way of taking things that seem insignificant and multiplying them in huge ways. And so maybe you feel like your, your little donation today would be insignificant. Can I just say it's not? All of us together today, we need to do this. And insignificant, big, some of you, some of you have the means. And I believe that God is telling you to go to Costco and get pallets of water and pallets of cereal and pallets of canned goods because God has blessed you and you can do that. For many of you guys, maybe God's calling you to take whatever your grocery bill is and just double it and fill up not one cart, but two cart. I would just say, do that. And so here's what I'm asking in this moment that you would just say, God, what is it that you're calling me to do? And then you would go do that. We're gonna give you a list when you leave today. It looks like this. And uh, as you leave today of the items that we need you to purchase, you can also right now text the keyword food bank to 797979. So food bank to 797979. You'll get this list. And uh, I'd appreciate it. And the food bank would much appreciate it if you buy items that are on this list. That way we don't get a bunch of stuff or they don't get a bunch of stuff that they really don't need. So buy the items on this list. And so you're going to get this list. And uh, then you're going to go to Walmart right next door or Costco. They're ready for you, all right? I mean, they have overstaffed. They have put the groceries out where they need to be out. They are ready for you. And uh, on your way to Walmart, as you walk out the door, we'd love for you to grab a red t-shirt. There's thousands of red t-shirts. Grab one. You've seen many people wearing it today. Ethan had it on a second ago. Grab a red t-shirt, slip it on over your clothes, okay? And then go out and go shopping, all right? 
And uh, for many of you guys, you're thinking, well, I've got an appointment to go to. I've got something I need to do, all right? Well, hey, this is going to take you about 20 minutes, and I encourage you, if you have somewhere you need to be, just text the person that's waiting on you and say, hey, I'm going to be about 20 minutes late. If you have, you know, some people you're meeting for breakfast, text them and say, hey, I'm going to be about 20 minutes late. And they're going to ask why, and you get to tell them, I'm meeting a need in my community, all right? And so we can all do this. And so you're going to get the list, you're going to slip on a t-shirt, then you're going to go shopping, and then here's, this is really important, okay, you got to listen, listen, listen. You're going to come back into the parking lot, and we need you to turn your flashers on when you come back into the parking lot, and our parking team will direct you. If you don't have your flashers on, we will park you for the next service, and you'll have to hear me twice. It's a bad day. All right, so put your flashers on. We'll direct you, and it'll be right over here, the food drop-off location, and then we will unload your car for you. We will actually unload it, and then we will take it to the food bank, all right? So everyone stand up. Are you ready for this? Can we do this, church? So let's arise and shine. Let's let our light shine today, and let's say as a church, we will not let the love of God disappear in our city, but we will not only see the need, but today we will do something about it. And so grab the list, grab your t-shirt, go shop, bring it back in the next 20, 30 minutes, an hour, and we'll see God do something significant. He'll take our donation, he'll multiply it, and we'll be able to meet a huge need in our community. Let me pray for you. Everyone bow your heads real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person today as they leave before we go out, God, that you would just supernaturally do something significant, move in their hearts today to respond to the message in a big way. And as a church, may we see the need and meet the need today. And may you take this donation, this offering, God, and may you multiply it for the food bank. And may it make a big difference in the 34,000 people in our region that are going to get to experience the love of Christ through this food in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen, church. Hey, we'll see you later. We'll see you next week.